Hey everybody, my name is Eric Hansen and it's great to be with you. I wish I could be with you there in person live, but my job has is, its quirks to it. I have an awesome job. I'm a reporter and anchor for KCCI TV here in Des Moines and it's, and it's a great job to have, but one of the quirks about it is my hours are very early. I wake up every day at 2.45 a.m. That means I have to go to bed pretty early, so as you're watching this, I'm already sawing logs. But I wake up at 2.45 a.m. to get the morning news ready on KCCI, and it is a cool job to have, even if it does mean going to bed early and waking up early. Every day, I get to read the headlines to all of Central Iowa and tell them what's going on, what the weather forecast is coming up, whether or not kids have school that day because of snow, and whatever else is happening in the world kind of get people ready for their day. Basically, I'm a communicator and that's what I do every day. But being an anchor is only part of my job. I'm also a reporter. And that means going out and interviewing people, talking to people and telling people their stories. I've been here at KCCI in the Des Moines area for 20 years now. I grew up up in Story County and I myself was a 4 -er, just like all of you. In Story County, I was a member of the Howard Rockets 4-H Club and I was in 4-H from fourth grade all the way through my senior year. You want proof? Here it is. Here's my 4-H record book that is pretty thick with all of my topics like swine and dog obedience, communications, woodworking, photography, all kinds of things. And yes, I did say communications because that was one of the things that I did in 4-H growing up. I had a blast doing that and learned so much from that. I'll get back to that in just a little bit. But first, I wanna tell you a little bit more about my job. As I said, I wake up at 2.45 every day and I start to get the news ready. And then from 4.30 to 7 every morning, I'm on live TV. Usually that's down at the station downtown in Des Moines where our signal goes to, from the Missouri border up to the Minnesota border, kind of in this middle third of the state. But now during COVID, I've been sent home. So mornings right now, I'm sitting right here in the corner of my basement doing the news and it's and it's really amazing that the technology makes it happen then after seven o'clock when the uh, morning news is over then i start my reporting day and i go out and i interview people i tell their stories i put them together for later newscasts i work on things for facebook and the web and twitter and instagram and it's and it's a great job where I get to meet with so many different people and tell their stories. In fact, as I said, I've been there for 20 years. I've had some amazing experiences in those 20 years. Five years ago, when I hit my 15th anniversary, I put together a list of my 15 favorite stories so far. I'd love to share that with you, and hopefully you'll have some fun seeing the fun that I've had at KCCI over the years. For 15 years, I've been honored to tell your stories here on KCCI. That's about 3,200 stories I've told, given me kind of a backstage pass to life and a whole lot of fun moments too. So humor me and we'll count down my 15 favorite fun moments since May 25th of 2000. At number 15, bowl games. I've been to four of them following the Hawks and the Cyclones and even Boise in the snow is fun when you're following fans from Iowa. At 14, Las Vegas. When Allegiant Airlines came to Des Moines, my boss told me to hop a flight and hang out on the strip tough gig. My 13th favorite fun assignment, winning two titles in Iowa State cow chip throwing contest, proving I am number one at number two. Two seasons ago, I got to follow the Cyclones to the Big Apple, partying Sweet 16 style with a Cardinal in gold at Madison Square Garden. At 11, it's the first time I was sent overseas for work. In 2006, I was sent to England to check out an indoor rainforest like they wanted to build here in Iowa. The Iowa version was never built, but I got fish and chips out of it. My 10th coolest assignment, walking the fairways of North Carolina with Iowan Zach Johnson. It was just before he won the Masters, and he's just as cool as he seems on TV. When skydiving is only number nine, you know cool things are to come. I jumped from 13,000 feet over Winterset and lived to tell about it. At eight, I'm combining my two trips to Haiti, one before the earthquake, one after. Iowans have fed millions of kids there through Meals from the Heartland, and seeing them open our food is unspeakably awesome. Humor me, number seven is just CBS fun. I got to visit the sets of NCIS Los Angeles, Person of Interest, How I Met Your Mother, and my favorite, The Big Bang Theory. 
Sitting on Sheldon's couch with the primetime geeks was so much fun. But it was nothing compared to number six, Bob Barker. Eric Hansen, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Right before the legend retired, I joined him on the same set where he played Plinko for memories about his time in the military learning to fly in Ames and partying at Babes in Des Moines. Number five is just the silly fun I've had with everyday Iowans, like Maxburg skillet throwers and even my photographers at, say, Eldon's American Gothic House. At four, the five unforgettable trips I've taken with Iowa veterans to see their monuments in Washington, D.C. It was an honor just to be on the same 747 with the men and women of those honor flights. My third favorite memory took me almost out of this world. I followed Iowa State students for an experiment in weightlessness in Houston, on NASA's Vomit Comet. I did keep my food down, but somersaulting seven times in midair is an experience almost no one gets. My runner-up, walking with lions in South Africa. While covering Iowa's huge impact on that country, I experienced a safari, but also spent an hour playing with and holding the tails of these man-eaters. Freaky, but oh so memorable. So what can top that? The most fun thing I've done at KCCI happened May 12, 2009, when I got to fly an F-16 fighter jet. Before the Des Moines-based guard unit left town, their afterburners shot me straight up to 10,000 feet. I passed out while pulling 9 Gs. And then I got to take the stick and spin the $35 million fighter jet. My heart still pounds watching this video. Those are not my best stories, but they're just the most fun ones I've had the honor to tell. Thank you so much for inviting me into your homes for the last 15 years, and we'll see where our next story takes us together. Isn't that cool? I have to admit, I still am amazed that my boss has let me do some of those things, like jumping out of an airplane and going to Africa and in a, a flying in a fighter jet. Actually, I got to fly that fighter jet, and it was so cool. My job has taken to me to amazing places, and it is a really cool job because every day is different. I never know whether I'm going to be standing outside in a blizzard or doing a story up at the Iowa State House or interviewing a, a crazy person doing something fun across central Iowa or being sent somewhere in the world. It is a really cool job. Now, that being said, if you are interested in a job like mine or like any of them, when you are a communicator, the main thing you can do is just practice communicating. And for me, it really started as a 4-H'er. When I was, a, when I was a, maybe a fourth grader, we had to give presentations to our club every year. That's where I did some of my first presenting to a group, and that's where my skills grow. It's just you get better by doing. And over the next several years, my skills got better. By the time I was in junior high, I was doing stuff with my church groups and my uh, sports groups and all kinds of things like that. And then by the time I got to high school, I also joined speech clubs and, and speech competitions in high school, got to radio news broadcasting, went to Allstate in that, and I started to think, well, I really like this. I'm having a good time doing it. Maybe I could do it for a job. So I went on from there to Wartburg College after I graduated from Roland Story High School. I went to Wartburg College in Waverly and got a lot more experience, just learning by doing. There was a television station right on campus, a radio station on campus. I practiced. Then I did an internship up in Minneapolis, watching people at a television station actually doing the job. So right after college, I was able to, to uh, get a job in Waterloo at KWWL um, at, for an internship. Did a job up in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, back to Waterloo, and now I've been in Des Moines for 20 years, and I've been having a blast. As you saw, I get some, some awesome experiences. So yes, high school speech was one of the very important things that I did, but also I talked about those educational presentations I did in 4-H. Standing in front of your club and organizing your thoughts and having a game plan and getting the words out of your mouth is really important. Even if it doesn't work perfectly the first time, it's learning by doing, and that's so important in this job and so many others. Just have an experience. Get better each time you do it, and eventually it gets better and better and better. In fact, for me, I started out doing club presentations, and then after that, I did presentations at the county fair. And then I did presentations at the state fair. And then I had an experience in high school in 4-H that is still amazes me. This was my uh, junior year of high school. It was the spring of my junior year, and I got to give a 4-H presentation, check this out, 
to First Lady Barbara Bush. That's me in my 4-H patch and my 4-H name tag at Living History Farms in Des Moines. That's sitting First Lady Barbara Bush at the time. She was the president's wife at the time. And another 4-H'er and I were teaching her farm safety. It's a presentation that I had done at the county level and at the state level. And so when she wanted to learn more about farm safety and promote it so that kids across the country wouldn't get themselves into trouble, 4-H organization called me, the little redhead up there, and I showed the sitting first lady how not to tip over a tractor. So you don't drive it up and tip it backwards. You go back up a hill and do different things like that. That was a cool experience. I got about five minutes with the first lady when she was, uh, you know, heading back to the White House in just a couple of hours. But then after I talked to her, then I got my very first experience being interviewed that day about that experience on KCCI, the television station that I worked on, that I work at now. So this was my first time on KCCI. And if you look closely, I have my, case, uh, my 4-H patch on my shirt just after talking to the first lady. And I got interviewed on KCCI by Mike Sims and Sarah Jarvis about what it was like to talk to the first lady and so my first time on KCCI on television was in my 4-H shirt and I had a blast doing it. But there again, I'm sure I wasn't very good, but I learned by doing. And that's one of the keys, just keep getting better. Another key to my job is organization. You have to plan ahead in order to get everything done that I need to get done. Who do I need to interview? At what time? In what order? And then also being fair so that every so that I tell every side of the story. Some of them are fun stories. Some of them are serious stories about things in government or crimes or things to do with law or medicine. Right now we're doing so many stories on coronavirus and we want to make sure we get every part of those stories accurate so that you as viewers can understand what's really going on from the experts. So part of my job is going out there and talking to the experts, making sure that I then piece it together that's in an understandable way. And sometimes I'll have a conversation that lasts 20 minutes with somebody, but I have to boil that down to about a minute or two minutes so that it's understandable and digestible by the people who, to, who get it and so people aren't confused. So I'm doing a lot of learning every day I learn a lot of topics, everything from school to medicine to crime to courts to how state government works, everything like that. And then it's my job to translate it into what people are doing. It's essentially the same exact thing you do in an educational program at, at your 4-H club or at school or anything like that. The other thing that's so important is just the organizational skills, like I said. Now, when I was in 4-H like you, I had some good experiences too, like this one. When I won a dog trophy for, for uh, obedience at the Story County Fair, uh, it was so many great memories I had in 4-H and I am blessed by them. But more than anything, I'm so blessed by the adults in 4-H who came alongside me, who taught me, who, who helped me grow, who taught me all these things that are documented in my 4-H record book over the years, everything from budgeting, to, uh, to communication, to organization, to goal making. It's also important in, in 4-H and then it passes along to, to uh, your career, whether it's a career like mine or not. Communication is so important in every career and whether no matter what your job is, you need to communicate with customers or clients or students or professionals or the people you work with, whoever it is, communication is so important. So practice that over time. Make sure you spend the time to do it and, and, and learn by doing because I know when I was in fourth grade, I did not have good communication skills. But by practicing it by fifth and sixth grade, things were getting better. By high school, I was in speech and getting some more experience. And then by the end of high school, I was talking to the first lady at Living History Farms, being on TV and all of that led up to the job that I currently have. I am absolutely blessed with so many things in my, in my life, but I'm definitely blessed by the experience I had in 4-H. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. Well, you say that in a 4-H meeting when you're growing up, 
And by the time you're an adult, you take some of those things about your head, hands, heart, and health, and you put them all together. You find a passion that you love, whether it's television or radio or newspapers, or if you're a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher or plumber or anything else in the world, use the, use the talents you have been given, practice, get better, and over time, you can achieve awesome things too. I'm so blessed to be able to spend a little bit of time with you. I wish I could stay up and, and do it in, in real life, in real time person. But at the same time, I am available on email and on Facebook. The folks in charge of this can pass along any questions you have. I'll get to them in the next couple of days and get back to you to answer your questions. But again, just find a passion, follow it, and, and, and you'll have great success in your life too. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me. Hope you have a great evening. Thank you for watching. For more information on Polk County 4-H programming, connect with us by email at polk4h at iastate.edu or by phone at 515-957-5760.